a revelation of Jesus Christ, which God granted in him to show his servants what must happen soon, foretold and delivered by his angel to his servant John, who testified about everything he saw, God's word, as well as Jesus Christ's own testimony. Blessed are the orator of these prophetic words and those listening, and who heed what is written in it, as the time is near. From John to the seven callouts of Asia, grace and peace to you from him who is, and was, and will come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the witness, the faithful one, firstborn of the dead, and premier of earthly kings. To him who loves us, delivers us from our sin by his blood, and fashioned us into a kingdom, priests to God, his Father. To him be the glory and dominion unto the ages of ages. Amen. Look, among the clouds he is coming. Every eye will see him even those who pierced him. All tribes on earth will mourn him. Amen indeed. I am Alpha and Omega, saith the Lord God, who is and was and will come Almighty. I, John, your brother and companion in the tribulation, kingdom, and perseverance in Jesus, was on an isle called Patmos for the sake of God's word and the testimony about Jesus. Being in the Spirit on the Lord's day, I heard a call behind me, loud as a trumpet, saying, What you see, write in a scroll and send to the seven callouts, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thuatera, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea, so I turned to see the call which was speaking to me, and when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands, and among the lampstands, someone like a son of man, arrayed in a floor-length robe, with a gold sash wrapped about his chest. Now his head and his hair, white like wool and white like snow, his eyes like blazing fire, his feet as if they were molten bronze when heated in a furnace, his voice roaring like many waters. In his dexter hand he held seven stars. Coming from his mouth was a sharp, double-edged sword, and his countenance shining like the sun in its power. Then, when I saw him, I fell at his feet as if dead. But he placed his right on me, saying, No fear, I am first and last and living. I was dead, but see, I live unto the ages of ages. I have the keys to death and Hades. So, write what you've seen, and what happens, and what eventually follows afterward. The mystery of seven stars, which appear in my right, and the seven gold lampstands, the seven stars, angels of the seven callouts are, and the lampstands, the seven callouts are. For the angel of the callout in Ephesus write, Thus saith the upholder of the seven stars with his right, who walks among the seven lampstands of gold. I know your work, and trouble, and your perseverance, and that you are unable to tolerate evil. You have examined those proclaiming themselves apostles, yet are not, and found them false. Perseverance you have, and you have endured through my name, and not faltered. But I hold against you that you forsook your first love. Therefore, recall from whence you fell. Repent, 
and carry out your initial work. Otherwise, I will come and take your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. Even so, this you have. You hate the work of the Nicolaitans, that I also hate. He having an ear, hear what the Spirit says to the callouts. To an overcomer, I shall grant him to eat from the tree of life, which abides within the paradise of God. And for the call out in Smyrna, write, Thus saith the first and last, who was dead and lived. I know your tribulation and poverty, though you are rich and the blasphemy of those who proclaim themselves to be Jews and are not but the congregation of Satan. Do not fear what you must endure. See, the devil must throw some of you in prison to test you, and you will have ten days' hardship. Remain faithful until death, and I will give you the crown of life." He having an ear, hear what the Spirit says to the callouts. Who overcomes will not be harmed by the second death. And for the angel of the callout in Pergamum, write, Thus saith the wielder of the sharp, double-edged sword. I know where you live, the whereabouts of the accuser's throne, yet you uphold my name yet did not denounce my faith, especially in the days of Antipas, my faithful martyr, who was killed in your midst, where the accuser lives. But I hold a little against you, that you hold there some who uphold Balaam's teaching, who taught Balak to drop a stumbling block before the children of Israel, and eat idol offerings, and fornicate. Also, you hold some who uphold the Nicolaitan teaching accordingly. Repent, therefore. Otherwise, I will come quickly and war against them with the sword from my mouth. He having an ear, hear what the Spirit says to the callouts. To an overcomer, I shall grant the encrypted manna, and I shall grant a white stone, and written on the stone a new name which no one knows except the recipient. And for the call out in Thuatera, write, Thus saith the Son of God, who has his eyes as burning fire and his feet like molten bronze. I know your work, and love and faith and ministry and your perseverance, and your work of late, better than previously. But I hold against you that you overlook the woman Jezebel, who proclaims herself a prophet, and teaches and misleads my servants to fornicate and eat idol offerings. Now I gave her time to repent, but she does not want to repent from her fornication. Look, I will throw her on a sickbed and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation, unless they repent from their actions, and her children I will condemn to death. And all the callouts will know that I am the searcher of mind and heart, while I shall give to each of you according to your work. Now I say to the rest of you in Thuatera, who do not hold this teaching, who did not study the depth of Satan, as they will say, I bestow on you not another burden. All the same, what you have, uphold till whenever I arrive. And who overcomes, and who maintains my work till the end? I shall grant him authority over the nations, and he shall shepherd them with an iron rod, when the vessels of clay shatter, as have I myself received from my Father, so shall I grant him the morning star. He having an ear, hear what the Spirit says to the callouts.
And for the angel of the call out in Sardis, write, Thus saith the holder of the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, I know your work, that you have a name, that you live, yet are dead. Awaken and strengthen the remnants that were about to face death, for I have not found your work completed before my God. So remember how you have received and heard. Obey and repent. So if you don't awaken, I will arrive as a thief, and you will not know what hour I arrive against you. Although you have some names in Sardis who have not soiled their clothing, and they will walk with me in white since they are excellent. An overcomer, accordingly, will be clad in white clothes, and I shall not wipe his name from the scroll of life, and I shall profess his name before my Father and before his angels. He having an ear, hear what the Spirit says to the callouts. And for the angel of the call-out in Philadelphia, write, Thus saith the blameless, the indisputable, the keeper of David's key, who opens and none shut, and shuts and none open. I know your work. Look, I granted before you an open door. No one is able to shut it, because you have some power yet kept my word, yet did not denounce my name. Look, I deliver from the congregation of Satan, who proclaim themselves Jews to be and are not but frauds. Look, I will cause them to arrive and prostrate before your feet and know that I loved you. Because you kept my word, so will I protect you from the hour of trial that nears, coming upon the whole earth to try those dwelling upon the earth. I am coming quickly. Uphold what you have so nothing may take your crown. An overcomer, I shall make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and I shall not have him exit any more and I shall write on him the name of my God, and the name of my God's city, of New Jerusalem, which descends out of the sky from my God, and my new name. He having an ear, hear what the Spirit says to the callouts. And, for the angel of the callout in Laodicea, write, Thus saith truth, the faithful and indisputable witness, the premier of God's creation. I know your work, that you are neither cold nor hot. Oh, had you been cold, even hot! Therefore, since you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, you are about to spew from my mouth. Since you say, Rich am I, prospered have I, nothing lacking have I, while you do not know that you are wretched and contemptible, poor, blind, and naked, I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so you may prosper, white clothes to cover yourself, and your naked shame may not be made public and saline to anoint your eyes so you may see. In so much as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Energize, therefore, and repent. Look, I have remained at the door and knock. Should anyone hear my call and answer the door, I will enter to him and will dine with him and he with me. He who overcomes, I shall grant him to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat with my father on his throne. He having an ear, hear what the Spirit says to the callouts. After these I hearkened, and behold, an opened door in the sky. 
And the first call I heard sounded like a trumpet speaking to me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you what must happen. After these, I was instantly in the Spirit, and behold, the throne was resting in the sky, and on the throne he sits. And he who sits looks like stone, jasper and sardius, and a rainbow around the throne looks like emerald. Around the throne, twenty-four thrones, and on the thrones twenty-four elders sit, clad in white clothes, on their heads gold crowns. From the throne discharge lightning, and calls, and thunder. Seven fire jets burn before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne seemed a glass sea, like crystal, and centered in the throne and encircling the throne, four beings, eyes saturating front and behind. The first being lion-like, the second being ox-like, the third being having the face of a man, and the fourth being flying eagle-like, and the four beings, each one of them having six wings apiece, eyes saturating around and within, having no rest day or night, say, Blameless, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was, and is, and will come. And whenever the beings offer glory and honor and gratitude to he who sits on the throne, who lives unto the ages of ages, the twenty-four elders fall before he who sits on the throne. Worship he who lives unto the ages of ages, and hurl their crowns before the throne, saying, Worthy you are, our Lord and God, to receive the glory and the honor and the power because you created all things, by means of your will they became and were created. Then I saw in the right of he who sits on the throne a scroll, written inside and outside, sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel heralding in magna call, who is worthy to open the scroll and loose its seals? But none was able in the sky, nor upon the earth, nor underneath the earth to open the scroll, nor read it. I cried profusely, since none was found worthy to open the scroll, nor read it. Then one of the elders tells me, don't cry. Look, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the Davidic root, overcame to open the scroll and its seven seals. Then I saw amid the throne and the four beings and amid the elders a lamb standing while slaughtered, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God apostling to all the earth, he approached and obtained at the right of he who sits on the throne. And when he obtained the scroll, the four beings and the twenty-four elders collapsed before the Lamb, every one having harps and gold bowls fuming with incense, which are the blameless one's prayers. Then they sang a new song, singing, Worthy are you to obtain the scroll and open its seals, 
for you were slaughtered, then you redeemed for God by your blood throughout every tribe, tongue, people, and nation. Then you made them a kingdom and priests for God, and they shall rule upon the earth. Then I looked, and I heard the call of many angels around the throne, the beings, and the elders, and their number was myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, laying a magna call. Worthy is the slaughtered lamb to obtain the power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature in the sky and upon the earth and beneath the earth and in the sea all of them I heard saying, To he who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, the blessing and the honor and the glory and the dominion unto the ages of ages. And the four beings kept saying, Amen. And the elders collapsed and worshipped. Then I watched as the Lamb opened one of the seven seals, and I heard one of the four beings say with a thunderous voice, Come! And I hearkened, and behold, a white horse, and he seated on it wields a bow. He was given a crown, and he rode out vying for victory. Then, when he opened the second seal, I heard the second being say, Come! And another horse rode out, red, and it was given to him seated on it to take the peace from earthlings for slaughtering one another, and he was given a broadsword. Then, when he opened the third seal, I heard the third being say, Come! And I hearkened, and behold, a black horse, and he seated on it wielded a scale in his hand. And I heard a call in the midst of the four beings, as saying, A quart of wheat from a denarius, three quarts of barley from a denarius, and do not damage the olive oil or wine. And when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the fourth being say, Come! And I hearkened, and behold, a pale horse, and he seated on it was named Death. Hades was following him, and he was given authority over a quarter of earthlings to kill by sword, famine, disease, and through wild beasts of earth. Then, when he opened the fifth seal, I saw souls beneath the altar, slaughtered because of God's word and because of the testimony they were wielding. And they screamed a magna call, saying, When, blameless and indisputable master, do you judge and avenge our blood from those dwelling upon the earth? And each one was given a white robe, and told to take respite yet a little longer, until completion, and their co-servants and brothers are killed, just as they. Then I hearkened when he opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black as hair in sackcloth. The whole moon was like blood. Stars of the sky fell to earth, as the fig doffs its winter fruit shaken under a great gust. The sky was wrenched open like a rolled scroll, and every mount and isle was raised from its place. The earthly kings, magistrates, commanders, elites, and strong, everyone, slave and free, hid themselves in caverns and among the rocks of mountains, they said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and conceal us from the face of he who sits on the throne and from the Lamb's wrath. 
for the great day of his wrath came. Who is able to stand? After this, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of earth, restraining the four winds of earth. Hence, wind neither blows upon the earth, nor upon the sea, nor upon any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the eastern sun, bearing God's living seal. And he cried in magna call to the four angels, whom were bestowed the injuring of earth and sea, saying, Neither injure earth nor sea nor trees until we seal the servants of our God upon their foreheads. Then I heard the number of those sealed, 144,000 sealed from each son of Israel. Of Judah's tribe, 12,000 were sealed. Of Reuben's tribe, 12,000. Of Gad's tribe, 12,000. Of Asher's tribe, 12,000. Of Naphtali's tribe, 12,000. Of Manasseh's tribe, 12,000. Of Simeon's tribe, 12,000. Of Levi's tribe, 12,000. Of Issachar's tribe, 12,000. Of Zebulun's tribe, 12,000. Of Joseph's tribe, 12,000. Of Benjamin's tribe, 12,000 were sealed. After these I hearkened, and behold, a plenteous multitude, which none can number, from every nation, tribe, people, and tongue, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clad in white clothes and palm branches in their hands. And they screamed in magna call, saying, The salvation in our God who sits on the throne and the Lamb. And all the angels who had stood around the throne, with the elders and four beings, fell upon their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen! The blessing, the glory, the wisdom, the gratitude, the honor, the power, and the strength to our God unto the ages of ages. Amen! In response, one of the elders asked me, These clad in the white garments are who and came from where? I answered him, You knew, my Lord. And he told me, These are exiting from the great tribulation. They washed their garments and bleached them in the blood of the Lamb. Accordingly, they are before the throne of God, serving Him day and night in His temple, and He who sits on the throne resides with them. They will no longer crave nor thirst, neither the sun nor any heat will fail even one. For the Lamb, centered amidst the throne, will shepherd them, leading them to the water fountain of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Then, when he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in the sky about half an hour. Then I saw the seven angels who stood before God, and they were given seven trumpets. Then another angel came and stood at the altar, having a gold censer, and plenteous incense was given him to deliver the prayers of all blameless ones at the gold altar before the throne. Incense smoke arose by the blameless one's prayers from the angel's hand before God. And the angel took the censer, engulfed it in the altar's fire, swung it to the earth, and there were thunders, calls, lightning bolts, and an earthquake. 
Then the seven angels, having seven trumpets, prepared themselves to blast. The first blasted, and there was hail and fire mixing with blood, then thrown to the earth. The third of the earth burned up, the third of the trees burned up, and all the green grass burned up. The second angel blasted, as a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea. The third of the sea became blood. The third of the creatures at sea died who have life, and the third of the ships perished. The third angel blasted. A great star fell from the sky, burning like a jet, and fell onto the third of the rivers and water fountains. The name of the star was said, the Opsinthos. The third of the waters became Opsinthos, and plenteous men died from the water because it was embittered. The fourth angel blasted. The third of the sun, the moon, and the stars was struck. So the third of them was darkened, and the day did not shine for the third of it, and the night likewise. Then I looked and I heard a lone eagle flying in mid-heaven, laying a magna call. Woe, 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 those dwelling upon the earth! Hence the looming trumpet calls of the three angels about to blast. The fifth angel blasted. And I saw a star of the sky fallen upon the earth. He was given the key to the netherworld pit. He opened the netherworld pit. Smoke ascended from the pit as a great furnace smoke, and the sun and sky were darkened by the pit's smoke. From the smoke came locusts against earth, and they were given authority as scorpions of earth have authority. And it was told them, Neither harm the grass of earth, nor anything green, nor any tree, but only the humans who do not have God's mark on their foreheads. And it was set on them not to kill them, but to torment five months, and their torment as scorpions torment when stung man. In those days humans seek death, but yet never find it. They will long to die, yet death flees from them. And the locusts' appearance, like horses prepared for battle, on their heads as crowns like gold, their faces as faces of men, having hair as women's hair, their teeth were as lions, having breastplates as iron breastplates, and the call of their wings as the call of plenteous chariots' horses charging into battle having tails like scorpions with stingers, in their tails they have authority to harm the humans five months, having their king over them, the angel of the netherworld, his Aramaic name Abaddon, and in the Greek he has Apollyon, and in English Destroyer. The first woe passed, behold yet to come, the second woe after these. The sixth angel blasted, and I heard one call from the horns of the gold altar before God, telling the sixth angel who has the trumpet, Loose the four angels bound at the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were released, having been prepared for the hour, day, month, and year to kill the third of men. The cavalry of troops numbered twice ten thousand of ten thousand. I heard their number. Hence I saw the horses in the vision, and those seated on them, having fiery, jacinthine, sulfurous breastplates, the horses' heads as lions' heads. Fire, smoke, and sulfur project from their mouths. By the three of these plagues are the third of men killed from the fire, the smoke, and the sulfur projecting from their mouths. For the horse's authority is in their mouths 
and in their tails, for their tails appear as serpents having heads, and by them they harm. And the rest of men, who were not killed by these plagues, would not repent of the work of their hands, to stop worshipping the demons and idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, and wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk, nor repent of their murders, nor of their witchcraft, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Then I saw another strong angel descending from the sky, covered in steam, a rainbow around his head, his face like the sun, and his feet like blazing pillars. He held in his hand an opened microscroll. He planted his right foot upon the sea, but his left upon the earth, and screamed a magna call like a roaring lion. When he screamed, the seven thunders uttered their own calls, and when the seven thunders uttered, I was about to write, then I heard a call from the sky saying, Seal what the seven thunders uttered, and don't write them. And the angel, whom I saw standing upon the sea and upon the earth, raised his right hand toward the sky, and swore by he who lives unto the ages of ages, who created the sky along with what are therein, the earth with what are therein, and the sea with what are therein, that delay would no longer be. But in the days the seventh angel calls, while he is about to blast, God's secret is accomplished, as he himself announced to his servants the prophets. Then the call which I heard from the sky continued speaking with me, saying, Go, receive the opened scroll in the hand of the angel standing upon the sea and upon the earth. So I went to the angel, telling him to give me the micro-scroll. And he tells me, Receive and devour it. Then it will embitter your gut, but in your mouth will be sweet as honey. So I received the micro-scroll from the angel's hand and devoured it. In my mouth was sweet as honey, yet when I swallowed it, my gut was embittered. Then he tells me, you must again prophesy over people, nations, tongues, and plenteous kings. Then a scepter-like ruler was given me, saying, Rise and measure the temple of God, the altar, and the worshippers in it. The courtyard out of the temple leave out. Don't measure it, as t'was given to pagans, and the blameless city will be trampled forty-two months. Then I shall grant my two witnesses. They will prophesy 1,260 days, clad in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands standing before the Lord of the earth. And should anyone incline to harm them, fire comes from their mouth and devours their enemies. Should anyone decide to harm them, he should die this way. These have the authority to shut the sky so no rain showers in the days of their prophecy, and have authority over the waters to turn them to blood, and to strike the earth with every plague whenever they so decide. And when they complete their testimony, the beast emerging from the void will pursue war against them, overcome them, and kill them. Then their corpse was in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Gomorrah, where also their Lord was crucified. Then peoples, tribes, tongues, and nations watch over their corpse three and a half days, yet don't permit their corpses to be laid in a tomb. Then those dwelling upon the earth cheer against them and celebrate, even send each other gifts as these two prophets vexed those dwelling upon the earth. Then, after three and a half days, the living Spirit of God entered them. They stood to their feet, 
and great fear befell upon those observing them. Then they heard a magna call from the sky, telling them, Come up here! And they ascended into the sky in steam, while their enemies observed them. And in that hour, a great earthquake was there. The tenth of the city collapsed. Seven thousand names of men were killed in the earthquake, and the remnant became afraid and glorified the God in the sky. The second woe passed. Behold, the third woe comes quickly. The seventh angel blasted, and became a magna call in the sky, saying, The kingdom of the world became our Lord's and his Christ's, and he shall reign unto the ages of ages. And the twenty-four elders before God, who sits on his throne, fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We thank you, Lord, our God Almighty, who is and was, as you have received your great power and reigned. As the nations raged, your wrath came with the time to avenge the dead and grant the reward to your servants, the prophets, the blameless, and those revering your name, small and great, and to destroy those destroying earth. Then God's temple opened in the sky, and the ark of the Lord's covenant appeared in his temple, and there were lightning bolts, calls, thunders, an earthquake, and great hail. Then a huge phenomenon appeared in the sky. A woman, clad in the sun, the moon beneath her feet, a twelve-star crown upon her head, and carrying in womb, then cried out in labor, being vexed for delivery. Then another phenomenon appeared in the sky. I saw a huge, fire-like dragon having seven heads, ten horns, and seven diadems upon its heads. Then his tail pulls the third of the stars from the sky and threw them to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman about to deliver. So once she delivered the child, he would devour. Then she delivered a son, a boy, destined to shepherd all nations with an iron rod. And her child was whisked to God and to his throne. Then the woman fled to the wilderness where there was a place prepared by God. So there they would nourish her 1,260 days. Then war ensued in the sky, Michael and his angels warring against the dragon. And the dragon retaliated along with his angels, but neither prevailed nor was room availed to them any longer in the sky. And the huge dragon was banished, the ancient serpent, the one called devil, and Satan, who deceives the whole world, banished to the earth, and his angels banished with him. Then I heard a magna call in the sky, saying, Just now ensued the salvation, the power, and the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his Christ, that the accuser of our brothers was banished, who accuses us before God day and night. And they conquered him through the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, and didn't love their life unto death. Rejoice in this, O heavens, and those residing therein. Woe, earth and sea, since the devil descended to you bringing fuming anger, knowing he has little time. Then, when I saw that the dragon was banished to the earth, he pursued the woman who delivered the boy. Then the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, so as to fly into her place within the wilderness, where she is nourished for a time, times, and half a time, away from the serpent's face. Then the serpent gushed water as a river from his mouth, overtaking the woman to render her awash. But the earth aided the woman, the earth opened its mouth 
and swallowed the river that the dragon gushed from his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman and embarked to wage war against the rest of her children who heed God's commands and uphold Jesus' testimony. And he was established upon the sand of the sea. Then I saw a beast emerging from the sea, having ten horns and seven heads, with ten diadems upon its horns, and blasphemous names upon its heads. And the beast was leopard-like, but its feet as a bear's, and its mouth as a lion's mouth. Then the dragon gave it his power, his throne, and great authority. Now one of its heads, while slaughtered for death, the wound of its death was healed. And the whole earth followed and worshipped the beast, saying, Who compares to the beast, and who can war against it? Then it was given a mouth, speaking grandeur and blasphemy. And it was given authority to wage war forty and two months. Then it opened its mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his house, and those residing in the sky. And it was given to wage war against the blameless and conquer them. And it was given authority over every tribe, people, tongue, and nation. All those dwelling upon the earth will worship it, of they whose name was not written in the slaughtered lamb's scroll of life from the world's foundation. Anyone having an ear, hear. Anyone to captivity leading, to captivity going. Anyone killing by sword, so be his killing by sword. Here is the perseverance and the faith of the blameless. Then I saw another beast emerging from the earth, while having two lamb-like horns, yet speaking as a dragon. It exercises all the first beast's authority before it, making the earth and all those dwelling therein worship the first beast, of which its death wound was healed. And so, performing great phenomena, fire descends from the sky upon the earth before the people, then it deceives those dwelling upon the earth by the phenomena granted that it perform before the beast, telling those dwelling upon the earth to make an image to the beast which, having the sword's wound, lived anyway. Then I saw it give spirit to the beast's image, and so would make the beast image speak, thus would whoever not worshipping the beast be killed. And it unifies all, the great and the small, elites and paupers, the slave and free, so they give a mark on their right hand or on their forehead, and so no one can buy or sell if not having the mark, either the beast's name or its name's number. Here is the wisdom. One with a mind decipher the beast's number, for it is a man's number, and his number is indecipherable graphic resembling similar to but not exactly resembling Greek numerals for 666. Then I hearkened, and behold, the Lamb, standing upon the mount at Zion, and with him 144,000, having his name and his father's name written on their foreheads. Then I heard a call from the sky, roaring like multiple waters, and rumbling like great thunder. Yet the call that I heard was as a harpist playing on his harp. And they sang some new song before the throne, and before the four beings, and the elders. But none was able to learn the song except the 144,000, purchased from the earth. It's these who weren't laid by women, virgins for sure. These following the Lamb wherever he goes. These with Jesus were purchased from the firstfruit men for God and the Lamb. And in their mouth, no lie found, blameless for sure. 
Then I saw another angel flying in mid-heaven, having eternal evangel to evangelize upon those seated upon the earth, and upon every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying in Magna Call, Fear God, and give Him glory, for the hour of His judgment came. Now worship He who orchestrates the sky, the earth, the sea, and water springs. Then a second other angel followed, saying, Fell, fell, Babylon the great, from whom her wine of passionate fornication all pagans have drunken. Then another third angel followed, saying in Magna Call, If anyone worships the beast or its image, or receives the mark upon its forehead or hand, then he shall drink from the wine of God's rage, with full strength concentration in the cup of his wrath, and be vexed with fire and sulfur before the blameless angels and before the Lamb. And the smoke of their vexation ascends unto ages of ages, having no rest day or night, who worship the beast and its image." and any who receive the mark of its name. Here the perseverance of the blameless is, who heed the commands of God and the faith of Jesus. Then I heard a call from the sky, saying, Write, Blessed be the dead who die in Christ hereafter. Say, Yes, Spirit, for respite from their toil, since their work follows with them. Then I hearkened, and behold, a white cloud, and seated upon the cloud like a son of man, having upon his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Then another angel came out from the temple, screaming with a magna call to the one seated upon the cloud, Thrust your sickle and reap, for the hour to reap came, for ripe is the harvest of the earth. Then he seated upon the cloud, swung his sickle over the earth, and the earth was reaped. Then another angel came out of the temple in the sky, also having a sharp sickle. Then another angel came from the altar, having authority over the fire, and called in magna cry, to the one having the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust your sharp sickle, and harvest the grapes of the grapevine of earth, for her grapes are primed. Then the angel swung his sickle to the earth, so was harvested the grapevine of earth, as he swung to the winepress of God's great rage. The winepress was trampled outside the city, and blood came out of the winepress, high as a horse's bit, for about six hundred stadium fields. Then I saw another phenomenon in the sky, great and astonishing, seven angels having seven final plagues, hence, with them, God's wrath ended. Then I saw what seemed a fire-mingled glass sea, and the overcomers, over the beast, over its image, and over the number of its name, had been standing upon the glass sea, holding God's harps. They sing the song of Moses, God's servant, and the Lamb's song, singing, Your work great and astonishing, O Lord God Almighty, your ways fair and indisputable, O King of nations. Who did not fear you, Lord? and glorify your name so blameless. For all the nations came and worshipped before you, so your fairness was revealed. And after that I watched. Thus was opened the temple courthouse for testimony in the sky. And the seven angels having the seven plagues came out of the temple, wearing pure, shining linen, with gold belts girded around their chests. One of the four beings gave the seven angels seven bowls, full of the rage of God who lives unto the ages of ages. Now the temple was filled with smoke from God's glory and from his power, 
and no one was able to enter the temple until the seven angels' seven plagues were concluded. Then I heard a magna call from the temple telling the seven angels, Go, pour the seven plagues of God's rage upon the earth. Then the first approached and poured his plague upon the earth, and there was a sore, wicked and painful, upon the men having the beast's mark and worshipping its image. Then the second poured his plague upon the sea, and there was a dead-like blood, and all living souls in the sea died. Then the third poured his plague upon the rivers and upon the water's springs, and there was blood. Then I heard the angel of the waters saying, You are fair, who is and was, O sacred, for these decisions. For blood of blameless and prophets they poured, so blood you have given them to drink. Then I heard the altar saying, Yes, Lord God Almighty, your judgment, fair and indisputable. Then the fourth poured his plague upon the sun, and it was given to scorch men with fire, and the men were scorched with great heat. The men blasphemed the name of the God having authority over these plagues, but did not repent to give him glory. Then the fifth poured his plague upon the beast's throne, and its kingdom was darkened, gnawing their tongues from the pain. They blasphemed the God in the sky over their pain and over their sores, but did not repent over their work. Then the sixth poured his plague upon the great river Euphrates, and its water evaporated, hence would be made way for the kings of the rising sun. Then I saw from out the mouth of the dragon, from out the mouth of the beast, and from out the mouth of the pseudo-prophet, three frog-like unclean spirits. For they are demonic spirits who perform phenomena, going forth to kings of the whole world, to congregate them for the war on that great day of God Almighty. Watch, I come as a thief. Blessed be he who watches and guards his clothing. He won't walk naked, and they won't see his shame." And he congregated them into the place called, in Hebrew, Harmageddon. Then the seventh angel poured his plague upon the air, and a magna call went forth from the temple in the sky, saying, It's over. And there were lightning bolts, calls, thunders, and a great earthquake, as has never been since men were upon the earth. Inasmuch was so great an earthquake. The great city split into three parts, and the city of nations fell, and Babylon the great was remembered before God, giving up her wine cup of rage from his wrath. All islands fled, and no mountain was found. Then great hailstones descended upon men. And the men blasphemed God over the plague of hailstones, because she is a great plague. Then came one of the seven angels that have the seven plagues, and he spoke with me, saying, Here, I'll show you the sentence of the great harlot seated upon many waters, with whom the kings of earth fornicated, and those dwelling on earth were intoxicated by the wine of her fornication. Then he took me into the wilderness in spirit, and I saw a woman seated upon a scarlet beast, full of blasphemous names, having seven heads and ten horns. Now the woman was clad in purple and scarlet, decked in gold, precious stones and pearls, holding a gold cup in her hand filled with sacrilege and the filth of her fornication, and written upon her forehead, Mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of earth's sacrilege. Then I saw the woman was drunk from the blood of the blameless and from the blood of Jesus' witnesses. And astonished I looked at her, a great phenomenon. 
Then the angel asked me, Why so astonished? I'll tell you the mystery of the woman and the beast having seven heads and ten horns carrying her. The beast you see that was, then is not, now about to emerge from the void, then goes to destruction, those dwelling upon the earth are astonished by, whose names were not written in the scroll of life from the earth's foundation, watching the beast that was, then is not, then reappears. Here is the mind with wisdom. The seven heads are seven mounts, where the woman is seated upon them, and are seven kings. The five fell, the one is, the other did not yet come, Whenever it comes, it must remain briefly, including the beast that was, then is not. Now this is an eighth, and is from the seventh, then goes to destruction. The ten heads that you saw are ten kings, who did not receive their kingdoms yet, but receive authority like kings, one hour with the beast. These have a singular design and they receive their power and authority in the beast. These will war against the Lamb, yet the Lamb will overcome them, for He is Lord of lords and King of kings, and those with Him, called, elected, and faithful. Then He told me, The waters that you saw, where the harlot is seated, are peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. The ten horns that you saw, including the beast, these hate the harlot, will lay her waste, leave her naked, devour her flesh, and torch her with fire. For God put it into their hearts to fulfill His design, to fulfill a singular design, and give their kingdoms to the beast until God's words are accomplished. And the woman whom you saw is the great city that has kingship over the kings of earth. After that, I saw another angel descending from the sky, having great authority. And the earth lit up from his glory. Then he screamed a strong call, saying, Fell, fell, Babylon the great! and became a dwelling of demons, and a prison of every spirit unclean, and a prison of every bird unclean, and a prison of every beast unclean and detested. For from her wine of passionate fornication all nations have fallen, and the kings of earth with her fornicated, and the merchants of earth from her power and luxury prospered. Then I heard another call from the sky, saying, Escape, my people! from her that you won't partake in her sin, and from her plague that you won't receive. For her sin reached high as the sky, and God remembered her crimes. Pay her back as she paid out, and double her twofold from her work. As she mixed in the cup, mixed for her twofold. How she glorified and lavished, insomuch give her torment and sorrow. For in her heart she said, I sit a queen and not a widow, and sorrow I shall not see. Because of this, in one day came her plague, death, sorrow, hunger, and in fire to be torched. Because the Lord God strong judged her, and the kings of earth will cry and mourn over her, who with her fornicated and lavished, when they see the smoke from her burning, standing far off in fear of her torment, saying, Woe, woe, great city, strong city of Babylon, for in one hour came your judgment, and the merchants of earth will cry and wail over her, for their goods none buy any more, goods of gold, silver, precious stones and pearls, fabric of pure silk and scarlet, and all fine wood, and all ivory imports, and all imports of exotic wood, bronze, steel, and marble, cinnamon and amomum, incense, myrrh and frankincense, wine and olive oil, flour and wheat, pets and sheep, horses and carriages, servants and human souls. The fruit of your soul's desire abandoned you, 
all luxury and bling deteriorated from you, and they shall find them no more. Merchants of these who prospered from her will stand far off in fear of her torment, crying and wailing, saying, Woe, woe, great city, clad in fabric purple and scarlet, decked in gold, precious stones and pearls, for in one hour so much wealth was laid waste. All captains and those who sail the coast, all sailors and whoever works at sea, stood far off, screaming while seeing the smoke from her burning, saying, Who is like the great city? They throw dust on their heads, screaming and crying and wailing, saying, Woe, woe, great city, in which all prospered, who have ships on the sea from her affluence, for in one hour laid waste. Rejoice over her, sky, and the blameless, the apostles and the prophets, for God sent your sentence against her. Then one strong angel took a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, Such a torrent threw Babylon, the great city, never to be found again. All the calls of harpists, musicians, flautists, and trumpeters, never to be heard in you again. And every craftsman of every trade, never to be found in you again. And the millstones call, never to be heard in you again. And the lamp stands light, never to shine in you again. And the call of the bridegroom and bride, never to be heard in you again. Because your merchants were the magistrates of the earth, because your witchcraft misled all nations, and in her was found blood of the prophets, the blameless, and of all slaughtering upon the earth. After that, I heard a magna call like a plenteous multitude in the sky, saying, Hallelujah! The salvation, glory, and power of our God, for his judgments, fair and indisputable. For he sentenced the great harlot who corrupted the earth in her fornication and avenged his servant's blood on her head. Then a second said, Hallelujah! And her smoke ascends unto the ages of ages. Then the twenty-four elders and the four beings fell and worshipped God seated upon the throne, saying, Truly, Hallelujah! Then I heard a call come from the throne, saying, Praise your God, all his servants, and revere him, small and great. Then I heard a call like a plenteous multitude, a call like many waters, and a call like strong thunder, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God Almighty ruled. Let's cheer, applaud, and give him glory, for the Lamb's reception came, and his bride prepared herself, and she was given shiny, clean fabric to cover, for the fabric is the fairness of the blameless. Then he told me, Write, Blessed be those invited to the Lamb's reception banquet. Then he told me, This word from God is indisputable. Then I fell in front of his feet to worship him, but he told me, Oh no, I'm your colleague among your brothers who have Jesus' testimony. Worship God. After all, the spirit of prophecy is testimony about Jesus. Then I saw the sky opened, and behold, a white horse, he who sits on it, called Faithful and Indisputable. He judges and wars with fairness, his eyes like blazing fire and many diadems upon his head, having a written name that no one knows except himself, clad in a cloak drenched in blood, and his name called the Word of God. 
Troops follow him in the sky on white horses, wearing pure white fabric, and a sharp, double-edged sword was coming from his mouth. So with it he would strike the nations. Then he will shepherd them with an iron rod, and he tramples the winepress of the wine of rage of God Almighty's wrath. And he has, on his cloak and thigh, written the name, King of kings and Lord of lords. Then I saw a different angel standing in the sun, and he screamed a magna call, saying to all birds flying in the lower atmosphere, Come, congregate for God's great banquet to feast on flesh of kings, flesh of commanders, flesh of the strong, flesh of horses and those seated on them, and the flesh of all, both slave and free, small and great. Then I saw the beast, the kings of earth, and their troops congregate to wage war against he who sits on the horse and against his troops. Then the beast was seized, and with him the pseudo-prophet, who performed phenomena before him, by which it misled those who received the beast's mark and worship its image. The two were thrown alive into the lake of fire, burning with sulfur. The rest were killed by the sword of he who sits on the horse, that came from his mouth, and all the birds were gorged by their flesh. Then I saw an angel descending from the sky, carrying the key to the void and a great chain in his hand. He captured the dragon, the ancient serpent, who is the devil and Satan, bound him a thousand years, threw him into the void, then shut and sealed him over so he would not mislead the nations again until the thousand years are completed. After that, he must be released a while. Then I saw thrones. They sat on them. Sentencing was delegated to them, and the souls of those beheaded for their testimony about Jesus and for God's word, who worshipped neither the beast nor its image, and did not receive the mark on their forehead nor on their hand, revived and ruled with Christ a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not revive until the thousand years were completed. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and blameless those who have a part in the first resurrection. Over these, the second death has no authority. Rather, they will be priests of God and Christ and will rule with him a thousand years. Then, when the thousand years are completed, Satan will be released from his prison and exit to mislead the nations at the four corners of earth, Gog and Magog, to congregate them for the war, of whom their number is like the sand of the sea. They ascend upon the plateau of the earth and encircle the castle of the blameless in the beloved city, but fire descended from the sky and devoured them. Then the devil who misled them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur, along with the beast and the pseudo-prophet, and they will be vexed day and night unto the ages of ages. Then I saw a great throne and he who sits on it, from whose face earth and sky fled, and no room was availed to them. Then I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and scrolls were opened. Then another scroll was opened, which is that of life. And the dead were judged by what was written in the scrolls concerning their work. The sea yielded those dead within it. Death and Hades yielded those dead within them. And each was judged concerning their work. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. 
and anyone not found written in the scroll of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Then I saw a new sky and new earth, for the first sky and first earth passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the blameless city, New Jerusalem, descending from the sky from God, prepared like a bride adorned for her husband. Then I heard a magna call from the throne, saying, Behold, God's house with humanity. He shall reside with them. They shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them. He shall wipe every tear from their eyes, and death will be no more. Neither sorrow nor crying will be any more, because the prototypes passed away. Then I saw he who sits upon the throne. Behold, I make all things new. And he says, Write, because these words are faithful and indisputable. Then he told me, It's all over. I am Alpha and Omega, beginning and end. I freely grant the thirsty from the water fountain of life. Who overcomes shall inherit these. I will be his God and he will be my child. But the retreaters, unfaithful, defilers, murderers, fornicators, witches, idolaters, and all impostors, their part, the lake of burning fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Then one of the seven angels who have the seven bowls full of the last seven plagues, came and spoke with me, saying, Here, I'll show you the bride, the Lamb's woman. Then he took me in spirit to a great high mountain and showed me the great blameless city, Jerusalem, descending from the sky from God, having God's glory, her sparkle like a precious stone, as a jasper stone glistening, having a great high wall, having twelve gates, twelve angels at the gates, with written names, which are the twelve tribes of Israel's sons, three gates from the east, three gates from the north, three gates from the south, and three gates from the west. The city wall has twelve foundations, and twelve names upon them from the Lamb's twelve apostles. Now the one walking with me was holding a gold measuring stick, so as to measure the city, her gates, and her walls. The city lays square, her length as long as the width. He measured the city with a stick at twelve thousand twelve stadiums. Her length, width, and height are equal. Her measured walls, one hundred forty-four cubits, a human's measurement which is angelic. The material of her wall, jasper, and the city, pure gold, like pure glass. The foundations of the city wall, adorned in every precious stone. The first foundation, jasper, the second, sapphire, the third, chalcedony, the fourth, emerald, the fifth, sardonyx, the sixth, sardius, the seventh, chrysolite, the eighth, beryl, the ninth, topaz, the tenth, chrysophras, the eleventh, jacinth, the twelfth, amethyst, and the twelve gates, twelve pearls. Every single one of the gates was from one pearl, and the city streets gold pure as transparent glass. And I didn't see a temple in her, because the Lord, God Almighty, is her temple and the Lamb. The city had neither need of the sun nor the moon to shine in her, for God's glory lit her, and her lampstand, the Lamb. 
The nations will walk by her light, and the kings of earth will bring to her the glory and honor in their nations. The gates of her day are never shut, for no night is there, and they will usher into her the glory and honor of the nations, and no contamination will ever pass into her, nor practitioners of sacrilege and depression, but only those written in the Lamb's scroll of life. Then he showed me the water of life's river, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb in the center of her street, spanning both sides of the river a tree of life, yielding twelve fruits, growing each of its fruit by month, and the tree's leaves for national healings. Every curse will be no more. The throne of God and the Lamb will be in her. His servants will worship Him, and they will see His face with His name upon their foreheads. No night will be there. They have no need of a lampstand or a sun, because the Lord God will light them up, and they will rule unto the ages of ages. Then he told me, These words, faithful and indisputable, and the Lord God's prophetic spirits sent his angel to show his servants what must happen soon. Now watch, I come quickly. Blessed be the observer of these prophetic words of this scroll. I am John, who hears and sees this. And when I heard and saw, I fell to worship in front of the angel's feet who showed me this. But he told me, Oh, no, I'm your colleague among your prophet brothers, and who observe the words of this scroll. Worship God. And he told me, Do not seal these prophetic words of this scroll, for the time is near. The unjust be unjust still, the wicked be wicked still, the righteous practice righteousness still, and the blameless be blameless still. Watch. I come quickly, and my reward with me, to pay each as his work is. I, Alpha and Omega, first and last, beginning and end. Blessed be those who wash their robes, since it will be their authority at the tree of life, and to pass the gates into the city. Outside, the dogs, witches, fornicators, murderers, idolaters, and all who love and practice deception. I, Jesus, sent my angel to testify these for you at the callouts. I am the root and descendant of David, the shining star, the dawn. The Spirit and the Bride are saying, Come, and who hears, say, Come. And who thirsts, Come. Who wants, Receive free water of life. I testify to everyone who hears the prophetic words of this scroll. If anyone adds to them, God will add to him the plagues written in this scroll. And if anyone subtracts from the scroll's words of this prophecy, God will subtract his share from the tree of life and the blameless city written in this scroll. Saith this testimony, Yes, come quickly, truly, come Lord Jesus. The grace of Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.